I want to talk about grades in this one. There are two types. There's tests and quizzes. If this is something other than Physics 110, there's also a lab grade. But if it's Physics 110, your lab grade officially is part of a different class. If you took Physics 110 a few years ago, then it was part the lab grade and the class grade were the same. There was greater coordination grade-wise, but that is not the case anymore. They've gone to a more flexible attitude as far as that. So you can pass one and fail the other, which was the, against policy for a few years there. Look in the syllabus for the exact numbers. It fluctuates from semester to semester, but test grades are somewhere around 77, 78 percent of the overall grade, and quizzes are 20, whatever the remainder is, 22, 23 percent, somewhere in there. There are also two class participation grades which count as quizzes. If you have any additional assignments, occasionally I do throw in an additional assignment in that, this, that will count as a quiz grade. The, there are usually three test grades, and as far as quizzes go, there are 12 quizzes, something like that. And for labs, there's usually 12 labs. The quizzes are based upon the homework. I will take one of each type problem of the assigned homework problems. The assigned problems are posted on Blackboard. I will take one of each kind, and I will change numbers if there are numbers. I will add some occasional phrase to, for clarification, but that's going to be the quiz. So for instance, I, if you look at the homework assignment, you might see, oh, there's 20 questions here. Well, then I pick four or five. I think there's one chapter where there's three. And so I give that as the quiz. If you are used to memorizing everything, well, quizzes is your chance, because memorizing really doesn't work well on the test. Actually, memorizing doesn't work well in the course at all. So please try not to memorize. Try to understand what's going on. Memorization can get you only so far, but I feel pretty sure you're not getting an A if all you're trying to do is memorize. And I think that's about it for grades. Oh, what when I hand an assignment back, and you will have a number on there, which is out of how it's a raw score. It's not a, it's not a percentage out of a it's not a percentage, it's just some raw number, and then there'll be a letter grade. What shows up in my grade book, I record both in my grade book. I record the raw score, I record the letter grade, and then the letter grade translates into a number on the 4-0 scale. So if you've got a B, it's a 3-0, a 4, uh, A is a 4-0, a B- minus is a 2.7, a C- plus is a 2.3, and so on. Now, a question that I've had in the past is, for the student who hands in complete garbage and the student who hands in nothing, is there a difference in those two grades? Yes. Ultimately, I've decided yes. The person who doesn't do anything will get on a 4-0 scale will get a negative 1. So that was officially a G. And that goes in the grade book as a negative 1 and gets averaged in on a 4-0 scale. The, and so for labs, I have another category. If you hand in a lab, I'm expecting you to try everything. If you are not doing a majority of one of the sections, so there's basically data, results, analysis, those are the three main, those are the three big ones. If you don't do one of the sections, a majority of one of the sections, then it's an automatic F, a zero. If you don't do two of the sections, it's like you never handed it in, that's a negative one. If you don't do a majority of the three of the sections, and this does happen occasionally, I've had two students, specifically two students who have handed something in without doing a majority of three sections. That means they didn't even bother writing down the stuff that was taken straight in the lab. That's a negative two because it's it's a nuisance penalty. You've wasted my time. You wasted your own time. You killed some trees in the process. So if you're going to do, well, in essence, half-assed work, don't bother handing it in. If you don't understand what's going on, talk to me. Please, please talk to me. I've got office hours. You can do it over email. Sometimes email works really well, and sometimes it doesn't. So it's got to be, it depends. You have to be able to read if I'm writing out. I can't do Greek letters in, in Outlook as best as I can figure out. But talk to me. If you wait until the last minute or there's something that comes up where you're not, where extenuating circumstances were out of your control, talk to me. Let me know, please, so we can work it out. If you need 
extra time. I need to know beforehand. Don't come to me the day after it's due and go, oh, I couldn't get it done yesterday because, you know, the car broke down. You know, at, now, in terms of whether you get penalized or not for handing in late work depends. If I've graded a majority of the ones handed in on time, then don't bother handing it in. And the reason for that is I've had some students who just wait and wait and wait and they keep building up the stuff that's not, that has not been done and then they hand in a huge stack of stuff at the end. And I've never had a student hand in a huge stack of work that was any good. Uh, that's one of the cases where one of those negative twos showed up. Actually, one of those cases is where that was one of the reasons I created the negative two. In terms of cheating on a 4 scale, the first time that you have done this, uh, that's a negative five on a 4 scale. Uh, so it'll severely hurt your, your overall grade, at least for that category, like quizzes or tests. The second time you do it, we're not having the discussion. First time we're having a discussion, I'm talking to you about it, you will know if you have a negative five on an assignment. The second time you do it, we will talk about that too, but you're done in the course. If there's no recourse other than if I can't get you out of the course, then pretty much be sure I'm rooting against you. And I know this is the threatening piece of it, and I hate to hate to lay down some threats on this one, but you know, above all things, I, I really trust my students and all but just actually there's three students in particular I can think of. Uh, and, and I'm getting mad all over again because of those three students. So just do your own work. Now there are certain cases like on labs where I get two people who discuss through an answer and they write down the identical answer. I will write some I will write negative five on the side of that. It's not a negative five on the whole thing, it's negative five on that one question that's on you know out of six points you got negative five points. So it's below zero. It's not like you lost five. You actually lost eleven points on that. So that's a case. Talk to me if it's innocent. You know, because sometimes two people I have no problem with students discussing the answers on the labs for analysis. It is excellent. I've heard some incredible discussions, really worthwhile discussions. But when you're writing answers, please use your own words. I have had situations where punctuation for punctuation, capitalization for capitalization, misspelling for misspelling, identical answers. I'm not playing the game of, oh, this person wrote the original and this person copied. No, I am penalizing both. So use your own words. And I think that's probably it for grades. Well, I say that, but most likely there's something else I'll remember later, and perhaps stick in a video at the end of things I forgot to say earlier. Have a nice day. And don't forget, this is physics, so don't forget to rejoice.